Welcome back. I hope everybody is doing well. All right, so today we are gonna continue on with the LED light strip. So let's rewind and talk about what happened in the first part. This is part two of the LED strip lights in the Baylander boat. All right, so in part one, we started taking everything apart and started running these uh, LED light strips. Now there, you're gonna see in the video, in one area, the LED light strips actually burnt out. Uh, so I had to source out, uh, uh, source out some new LED light strips. I didn't go with the same ones. I went with a different one. Um, I, I kind of liked it better. You're gonna see in the video. Uh, also, what really helped me out are these like little snap-on tabs, uh, the what like solderless uh, uh, LED light, solderless LED light snap-on tabs. Sorry, that was a mosquito. <laughs> Now that we have everything ran up, time to continue with part two. So let's start the video and show. Oh, also, um, I was gonna do a separate video on the drain plug, but it was so simple just to install it. I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw it in there with this video. So at the end, you're gonna see also see the, the LED drain plug and also my thoughts. All right, so it's been a while since I actually worked on the boat. Okay, so a lot of time has passed. I think it's been, I don't know, something like at least four months since I actually touched the boat to do anything with the boat. And with those four months, a lot of things have changed. I'm pretty sure you can notice uh, a couple of things that I changed in the garage. Uh, mainly um, storage area, which I really needed it, and also lighting. Uh, lots of, lots of lighting going on over here now. <laughs> All right, just bring everybody up to speed about what's happened through those four months. Uh, this panel right here actually got moved around a little bit. Uh, that's because I had to pull it out because I didn't install it because I wasn't done with it. And the boat had to go over to get the tarp done, uh, which Four Seasons Canvas and Design Man, the work that they did was just amazing. What's happening here with this panel is that during the sum, during that moving around, actually a section of the LED got damaged. Uh, so let me show you. All right, so there's an area over here that actually the, the gel piece got uh, ripped open and then somehow the the paper in the back uh, ripped and cut in half so I went ahead I cut out this section and uh, actually found something online that's gonna help connect these two pieces together a lot easier so let me grab it for you all right so I wanted to show you guys this uh, thing um, kind of really wish I had these LED strips instead of the other ones these one uh, these LEDs are a lot bigger and they seem to be a lot brighter and these uh, these clips actually fit on the copper ends really well whereas the other led strips that i had these ones were actually it, it looked like it was too wide so that's why i had to solder these ends in there but i already played around with one of these strips um, and plugged it in really well so uh, i'm really actually happy with these but i really wish that i had these to begin with with the project anyways it's uh, I'm not gonna cry over it, but I'm just gonna show you quickly on how I did this uh, and it seemed to work pretty well. So I only need one and the way I'm gonna do it is uh, positives over there and I want to make sure see how this one is closed. So it's here we go. All right. So when we open it, it's the upside right here. Whereas if I did this side, if I did that, I would have to flip it over, over and it would be opening underneath. So anyways, all right, so now what we have to do is we've got to pull back this gel piece a little bit. Okay, there you go. So nice and straight now. Everything's nice and straight. Feed it. Oh, ah. Everything is not nice and straight. Okay, there you go. There we go. So see how it sits perfectly right on those uh, copper tabs. And we just close this. Oh, I guess now I guess what you can do is you can trim this uh, the silicone piece, but uh, I'm keeping it only because of the environment is so wet. So I'll just grab a pair of pliers. And there you go. So that's in there, it's squished, it's nice and solid, and we're good to go. So now, fold this in half like so. All right, so one strip is done. 
And now for the other one, uh, I'm actually gonna flip this around like this. So that way we get the positive on the opposite side. So then we have that. All right, and repeat. Like I was saying, I actually really do like these and it made the job of uh, powering these LED strips a lot easier and a lot simpler. So yeah, food for thought guys, food for thought. All right, so what has happened is uh, I put all the panels back, as you can see, and I tried the lights on. Now everything on this side, which is closest to the power source where the switch is, uh, super nice and bright, the bow nice and bright but that side of the panel and underneath the the footwell or the in the footwell the leds were super super dim um so i think what's happening is that there's way too many led lights on one circuit or one switch so what i ended up doing was i was uh, i was figuring out uh, how can i run a power feed to that side and still be able to operate on the same one switch uh, then it popped into my head relays relays are a perfect example i was lucky i had ordered um, a set of relays uh, a while back and they were actually the wrong relays uh, they were for my force motor and um, so I needed a five blade relay. What came was actually a four blade re relay. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna see if I can actually implement those four blade relays into um, what I need for this. And uh, it worked, man, it really worked. So I'm gonna show you guys on how I wired it up because wiring is not my forte. <laughs> and um, so just in case if you guys out there are just wondering on how I did it, uh, I'm just gonna show you how I did it, but it, it really worked. And what was kind of lucky for me is that I'm actually starting the install for the radio. So what I did was I put another uh, another fuse panel back inside here, uh, six fuses, uh, fuse block. And so because of that, I'm able to actually to run a separate power source to that side and still be able to use the the switch on this side because I wired it actually into the relay. So that side, this panel, and those two cup holders are on that relay. What I want to do is I want to do this panel and these two cup holders on a separate relay, and then we have the the bow that's hardwired straight to the switch. Um, that way everything is getting the proper amount of power. So let's head back over to the garage and let me show you on how I'm wiring these four blade relays. All right, so here's that four blade relay. Uh, let's pop this out. Uh, hold on, there we go. There you have it. Uh, so this yellow one, I'm not gonna need. So the way that I figured is this goes to the LED. So this is the power source. If you know, I'm probably gonna say this wrong. I'm not gonna try to sound professional because I'm not. So this one here goes to the LEDs. This one here is the trigger wire. So the, LED, so the LEDs that are hooked up to the switch are gonna power this one. This here is uh, powered by the um, fuse block. So this is gonna get constant power from the battery. This is the negative. So the way this works is <clears throat> there's constant power going into this relay and it's grounded out. And then you have the trigger wire. Once I flip that switch, it'll trigger this relay to create a circuit or complete the circuit so that power flows through here towards the leds all right so i'm going to wire that up so white is trigger ground is ground red goes to the leds and the blue goes to the fuse panel all right let's do it all right so there it is the relay is mounted right underneath uh, we are actually on the left side or the port side the blue one is uh, constant power the black one is obviously negative the red one is trigger wire. The white one is power supply to the LED light strips. It's really that simple with this relay. And like I said, it gives um, a new fresh power supply to the LED light strips. For you guys, also for myself as a reference. So this LED light strip and those two in the bow are on one circuit, that, which is the circuit for just the switch. And then the two cup holders, that light strip, and these light strips coming down this way are on that relay, which is your second uh, circuit. And then these strips going on down this way. And then also these two uh, cup holders are on the 
the third relay or sorry the the third circuit which is on the relay it's just behind this panel right here um, that way everything has constant power everything has the adequate voltage to keep everything nice and bright as you're gonna see in the video at the end here oh man it looks absolutely awesome The way that I'm gonna connect this LED drain plug are uh, with these pins right here. So, uh, this side I already test fitted actually goes inside of the hole in the boat. Unfortunately, this doesn't. So what's gonna happen is that this is gonna stay inside the boat. This is gonna go on this end so that way I can push it through the hole and then within the boat I can actually connect it. Uh, this is waterproof, which is really good in my scenario, in my case. And uh, let's go ahead and just get this connected. Uh, no. No, 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 okay. Okay, so to end this all off, this was a ton of work. I learned a lot and would I do this again? I don't know, maybe. Uh, most likely, to get this done professionally or have someone do it for you, it will cost a lot of money and there is a reason for it. There's a lot of time invested in putting in these things. Now, is it worth it? Absolutely, especially if you're going to be doing doing any evening or early morning or even night driving or night boating. Uh, it, the ambience that it creates is undescribable and it just looks really, really friggin cool. So is it worth it? Yes. Would it justify me to pay someone to do it? Probably not. <laughs> so if, our, if we get another boat, chances are we will. Would I do, would I do that again? yeah i would but again this was a learning experience for myself i hope it was for you as well uh the led drain plug it's all right I i'm not gonna complain we spent like around what 25 30 dollars canadian dollars and it's bright it really is i just think that it's not as bright as i want it to be so i am gonna look around and get one of those uh the transom mounted led lights uh, super bright uh, actually you know what tonight what I'm gonna do is I have this voltage meter that also reads lumens uh, what I can do is tonight I'll run that to see how many lumens check in the description below to see on how many lumens this LED drain plug is putting out now again like I said stand, standing still it was all right you know it, it, you can see it when you're close up flying the drone as you saw it was it was bright but it didn't give off enough light in my opinion for what I want on the back of the boat so far it it seems to be it, it seems to be a good product it doesn't allow any water in, into the boat which is a bonus 
And yeah, when you're in the marina and you're docked, it's not overly bright. So yeah, I guess in a way, you know, it, it's an all right product. If this is the kind of thing you guys like to see and also off-roading, please, to help us out, think about subscribing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that way you are notified for every time there is a new video that comes out. Until the next time, stay safe. Who knows, maybe we'll see you out there.